to a new video. If you're new to our channel, welcome to the channel. My name is Hannah and welcome. Basically, our channel, this will be before I start the last video on this channel as Lou and Han. So I'll explain that all at the end of the video. But welcome if you are new, make sure to give this video a massive thumbs up and also to smash that subscribe button down below to be part of our channel. So I thought today I would do something a bit different. I was looking at basically what videos on our channel get the most views and all of our cruise line, Disney cruise line videos have had the most views from this year and last year. So I thought, hello. The dog had her teeth clean yesterday, side note, and they're very white. But yeah, I thought that the most viewed videos on our channel are our Disney Cruise Line videos, so I thought I'd do a whole let's talk about Disney Cruise videos and I can tell you everything there is to know about cruising. Well, we've only done the Disney Fantasy, but I can tell you everything about the Disney Fantasy, all about the cruise itself, the food, everything. And I just thought I could, exp you know, it's an expensive cruise. So for people that are considering it and may have watched the like snippet videos that I've done day to day might have a few questions. So I thought basically I would talk through the whole like Disney Cruise experience and everything just because then it might give you a better idea of things on the cruise that you may not have known. So basically Disney Cruise Line has four ships that go from in Europe, America, um, I think some go to Canada. But anyway, they have four ships. There's the Magic, the Wonder, the Dream, and the Fantasy. So we have only ever done the Fantasy for seven nights, going out of Port Canaveral to the Caribbean, and they alternate weeks, western to eastern, with different stops. We did the same stops this last year as the year before, because we did the same. For some reason, the one that we go on is slightly cheaper than the one where you go to St Thomas and St Martin's. So that is the cruise that we have been, now been on twice. So I feel like we know quite, well not loads, but we know quite a bit about it. And I just thought I would share that all with you. Anyway, I've written down a whole list of things to talk about. Sorry about that, but I don't know what happened. My camera just, I don't think I ran out of space on the memory card, but it said I had. Anywho, so I apologize if I'm a bit different to where I was before. But first thing I thought I would talk to you about, which is pretty basic, but, if you want to book a Disney cruise, you don't have to go direct through Disney. There are other eight like travel agents you can just book through a normal travel agent or you can go through Disney. When you are looking to go on a Disney cruise, maybe just look at the different sites you can potentially book through and see if any are offering deals. So the first year that we ever went, we booked on through a website called Travel on a Dream and they basically offered I think it was $250 room credit if your cruise was over the, between a certain amount and the higher the cruise value was, the more money they gave you. So that's why we booked with them. And then when we was on the cruise, we actually booked via on the app. So when we went on the first cruise before we got off, we booked to go on another one. And they gave us the perk of onboard credit again because we booked on board. Basically, because of the room type we were in, we didn't get the room discount, which I'll explain in a minute. But if you book on board again whilst you're actually on the ship, you get, I think, a 10% off the price if you book when you're on board. So that's a good perk when you're on. But I guess they know you're in the moment and loving it. So they're like, they, they want to get you involved in booking another one. But it's very easy to book another cruise whilst you're on the cruise because they're just so amazing. So that is... Just when you're doing your first cruise, just make sure you investigate the different companies, who's offering deals, if you're getting any form of like onboard credit, discounts, anything, just do that for your first one. And then depending on what state room you're in, book on board to get the cash onboard credit and the discount as well. So once you've booked, you then have access to, similar to my Disney experience, but it's like an cruise online portal as such so on that you can book your excursions you choose your dinner time or i think you choose your seating for your dinners when you book i'm not 100 sure on that one but you get your meal time will show on there you can book your excursions you can book meet and greets because you have to have tickets for the meet and greets such as the frozen one the disney princess gathering there are characters walking around the ship that you can have pictures with but the actual special meet and greets, you have to have tickets, so you book them on board, you book your seminars, so your alcohol tasting or 
cooking or anything like that, all of that is booked on this whole portal that you will get access to once you've booked your cruise. And you can also log on that to pay off some of the cruise and you also use that to do your online check-in. When you do online check-in, you then pick, if you're in concierge, you can turn up anytime you like, board anytime you like, because you have your own separate check-in area. However, if you're in a stateroom, you, when you do your online check-in, you pick your boarding time. If you want an early boarding time, you need to be there on that check-in day when you can pick your boarding time to get your early check-in time. But I think boarding goes up right up till half past three in the afternoon, but it starts as early as I think it might even be like half 11 in the morning. So if you wanna be on the ship that early, make sure you pick that time on the website when you're doing your online check-in. Right, then it goes on to all the fun stuff. I just wanted to give you like the blurby bit about booking and everything. But now I'll give you all the like more important information that you wanna know about. So room types, on the ship there are, I think on the fantasy, most of, obviously what I'm telling you is all about the fantasy, however the characters and everything, the meals and the merchandise will all be similar on all the ships, but sizes may vary, restaurants and things, so obviously what I'm telling you may vary on a different ship, but the whole process as such and what you get is the same. So room types, you'll have an inside stateroom which are in the middle of the ship, so you won't have access to a window. However, on Disney, which I think is pretty cool, is they make a porthole in your um, room on the wall, and they then project a live feed, which will have a camera from on the ship, of the sea. So it actually looks like you have a window, because the live camera feed shows you the sea and where we're going as though you'd have a window. So that would be in an indoor stateroom and then every now and again from videos i've seen like disney characters like come past the window and stuff it looks really cool so they're all in the middle and i look i think they're slightly lower decks as well they may be all the way up so i correct me if i'm wrong then you've got a stateroom with a window then you have a stateroom with a balcony and then you have concierge which is, I will exp I'll explain all about concierge because we've only actually ever done concierge, so I know quite a lot about it. Concierge means you are only on the fantasy, your rooms are either on deck 11 or 12, and you have a slightly bigger room, and it's decorated slightly differently as well, the decor is different. I think you have stupid things like two TVs. I'm not sure I could be wrong, but I think you do. You also have, the best perk of concierge is you have your own lounge. So, the con when you board, they ask, they take you to the concierge lounge if you want. You have a dedicated team that are there to help you throughout the whole cruise. They will sit, when you turn up, they sit you down, they talk you through your itinerary, make sure you're happy, suggest things that they might think you might enjoy, or like change things up if they think it's not for you and they're just amazing they are so helpful they're really nice they're just great and in also so you have it's like a seating area there's tables in there at the back they always have food in concierge so they'll have breakfast lunch and like evening food they also put out snacks during the other meal times between meal times sorry and then they have a ha they have free drinks in the concierge which for us was why we booked it from five onwards until they shower 11 p.m now you can go in there as much as you want and drink as much as you want if you want to. Like me and Lewis did kind of go through spells of really making the most of it. But the drink, free drinks to us is a massive draw. Drinks on the cruise are expensive if you drink quite a lot. And having free drinks from 5pm onwards is amazing for us. It just worked really well. We would always go in there and get one whilst, for whilst we're getting ready. We'd always go in there to get one when we were going to the shows. And then after the show would finish, we'd then go back up to get one to then take to dinner so we didn't have to buy a drink with our dinner. It was just for us, I found it a big benefit and was worth the extra money. And that is a good draw. It also, concierge, along with your room, you have the lounge and also they have their own sun deck, which is you go out of the concierge lounge and it's above. And then there they have a hot tub, they have your own um, sun lounges, they have fresh drinks out for, and they have sun cream and it's just really, really lovely and relaxing. There's rarely anybody up there, 90% of the time on the cruise, me and Lewis were the only people up there. So that was, again, really, really good. 
So in terms of rooms, you just pick, there's, I think, so there's three, there's the inside, the one with the window, looking out at the ocean, balcony, and then concierge. And then concierge has a whole level of rooms as well. So we only had the one with the balcony, but then you've got a one bed suite, you've got a two bed suite, and then you've got the three big ones at the end, which we did actually get to have a tour of because our stateroom host was amazing and let us have a look. And I'll leave a card up there so you can check it out. But that was the Walter E Disney suite, which is basically the best room you can have on the boat. And it was just, my mind <laughs> was blown. It was beautiful, absolutely stunning. But yeah, check that out if you've got a chance. So food is the next thing, which is obviously very important. Food is all included on the ship, other than the add-ons, which I'll explain in a minute. They have a buffet, which is called Cabanas for breakfast, lunch, and you can also go there for dinner if you want. Dinner is on a rotation service, so when you board the boat or when you book your cruise, you will actually get an allocated dining time so that you will either get, I think it's 5 or 6.30 and then 8.30. No, 5 or 6.15 and then 8.15. You always have the same waiter, which I love because the waiter gets to know you and what type of food you like. And throughout the cruise, they, or our one in particular, in the end, he was like, I know you're gonna like the starter based on what you've ordered. So here you go, even if you don't like it, he would just give it to us to try. That was great. You would then rotate the restaurants. So on the fantasy, there is Animator's Palette, the Royal Table and the Enchanted Garden and you would go through the three restaurants throughout the cruise so you would obviously do each one twice and the food menu would change at each restaurant even when you were back for a second time it wouldn't be the same food the menu would change and the food is amazing the disney in my eyes in my personal opinion disney cruise food is insane like nothing is better in my eyes than disney cruise food it's just honestly stunning the like from we we went from beef wellington to truffle filled ravioli we had lobster you can have like the food to me second to none you can't complain and then that's just in your normal standard included in your like booking restaurants you also have quick service windows throughout the day if you're at the pool and you just want to grab a burger they have like little quick service places if you don't want to sit in cabanas and eat like a buffet you can grab something from the quick serve windows there's an ice cream shop there's a sweet shop there's a coffee shop for adults that i think you can get pastries in or obviously if you're in concierge and you want they do like kind of afternoon tea sandwiches you can go in there and grab them and also room service which i'm 90 percent sure is included we had it included in concierge obviously you have to tip but room service as well and then you go on to the restaurants that aren't included which on our ship was paolo and remy you can either have dinner at either of them or both if you want to and they both also do brunch which i highly recommend on a sea day because you could because sea days are obviously the busiest on the ship we booked brunch both times and it's just a nice kind of breaks the day up and the brunch is insane so remy is the more expensive of the two the brunch i think is 60 a head no it's 30 a head i think maybe with 60 added on if you do the champagne pairing which we have done both cruises and then they have a brunch in paolo which is a buffet and then you order a main and i think that may be like 30 also or maybe slightly cheaper and then dinner Paolo is 30 a head and Remy is something like 115 a head, but that's like an eight, an eight or nine course, I think. Anyway, I've heard it to be amazing, but it's expensive. So I can understand if people don't want to do it, but Paolo's dinner, fabulous, amazing, felt so full when we left, it was terrible. Like just a lot of food. But again, really, really nice. They have a bar in the middle and the two restaurants come off either side so you can chill in the bar whilst you wait to be seated. It's just, oh, amazing. Back to the food quickly. The Paolo and Remy also have a dress code, which Remy's is, I think, kind of like a suit for a man in the evening 
and a dress for ladies and for the brunch also men have to wear shirts or coloured tops with trousers and women also have to wear like a dress and then Paolo is still dressy but I think you could wear jeans in there if you wanted to. I literally have no idea what that was. There was like a bang. You may heard it on the video. Can't find anything. Next, drinks, bars, stuff like that. With the drinks, you can, when you board the ship, you can either take two bottles of wine or champagne, and you can also men, well I say men, women drink beer, you can take six bottles of beer. So you can take either six bottles of beer or two bottles of wine, champagne, prosecco, or anything you want per person. So when we went on it, I took two bottles of Prosecco, Lewis took six beers. So that is great because you can drink that anytime you want throughout the day. I also think if you wanted to, you could pour one in your room and take it to for dinner because we used to take drinks from concierge and no one used to say anything. So that is another thing that's good. And then with the bars, they have pool bars, which they have um, pool service as well throughout the day. They walk around and take your orders around the ship and they also have a pool bar in the adults area which is actually built into the water which is really cool. A pop-up bar near the, well right next to like the main pool as such which has the TV and then they have, oh they have a bar in the main like lobby area when you first board the ship. I think all boats have, all of the ships have like an area like this. So on ours they had one, two, three, four bars and they're all different things. So they had like an Irish pub, they had a one that was like a merry-go-round in the middle like a French thing, then they had a champagne bar and then they had the tube which was where the entertainment mainly was in the evening for the adults and it was themed on the London Underground. They also had the skyline, so they had five bars which Behind the bar, the skyline changed for different countries or cities every, I think, minute. It was really cool. But all the bars have different themed drinks to what the actual bar is. The sports bar has TVs on. They have actually have wings in there as well, which you have to pay for. Uh, the French bar always had entertainment on, so they, when it kind of got to the evening before we'd go for a meal, they would always have a live singer on in the French bar, so we'd always go in there. You don't feel pressured in there at all in any of these bars to have a drink. Like they don't, it's not like you're sitting in there and you have to have a drink. There are people just sitting there to watch the entertainment. So you can go to any of these places that you want to go to and never feel pressured to buy a drink. You can just sit and enjoy the entertainment. The tube always had live entertainment on the evening, a lot of performers who were in the like shows they went in there and did different things they had bingo in there they had like loads of cool things in the tube drinks prices are kind of disney prices if not maybe a bit cheaper than a disney if you were to buy a glass of wine at disney it's kind of eight nine dollars for a glass of wine which i don't think is actually too bad but the drinks aren't insanely expensive but yeah if you sit and drink all day, it can add up. So that's the bars. Next is entertainment. Now, I think Disney is known for their entertainment on the ship. It is like unreal. So each, um, on the fantasy, there are the three main shows, which is Aladdin, Believe and Wishes. And they, we've seen them twice, and I would, I would happily see them over and over again. They are amazing. Wishes and Believe make me cry every time I watch them. They are unbelievable. Aladdin is just like the West End show, but cut down to an hour. Again, it's just like the one at the West End. It's amazing. And then they, so the shows work that the people who have the later sitting can watch it before their meal and then go to their meal and then the earlier one will watch it after their meal when, so yeah, that makes sense. They also have other shows on when they, because obviously it's a seven night cruise and that's only three nights. So this cruise, they had um, a ventriloquist, they had a comedian. They like change it depending on like, they've had circus performers, 
they're really, really good. A lot of them have been on kind of like America's Got Talent or things like that, so you know that they're going to be really good. They also have entertainment all throughout the day, and they then also have a cinema where they play Disney films throughout the day, which you can look at your thing you get in your stateroom, which I will explain about in a second, that tells you all the films. But entertainment is amazing. The live singers in the lounges are just unreal. There's no complaints about entertainment whatsoever, that is for sure. But as I mentioned regarding the piece of paper, each day before you go to sleep, there will be a piece of paper on your bed that lists all the activities for the next day, times where it's happening, what films are on, what characters you can meet, where you can meet them. It is like that piece of paper is amazing. It tells you everything. It's really, really helpful. Um, we used to like read it before the next day to kind of work out what we wanted to do. And it would tell you the cocktail of the day, what the weather was going to be like tomorrow, what the dress code for the next day would be for the evening. So whether it be pirate night or smart casual or formal night, it would tell you at the top so you knew what the next day was going to be. It would tell you the weather. It was just a really useful piece of information for basically your whole of your next day. And you will sometimes got other bits of paper if you were going to port like good shops to go to, discounts at the shops and things like that. So that was also another thing I nearly forgot to tell you guys about. Pools. So there is, on the ship, there is one, two, three pools? No, four pools. So in the main area where there is also a big screen that plays Disney films throughout the whole day, there is a main big pool. It's not deep, so it's mainly kids go in it mainly. And it has all sun lounges around it. And a lot of people just sit around there so that they can watch the movies. And then behind that is the like really small infant pool. And then behind that is a splash pad area for like kids to run around. It's all themed to find Nemo. There's water sprays and stuff like that. And also on that main, this is the main dead center of the ship as such. And that's also where the aqueduct is, which is a, um, a water flume, where it hang, goes actually off the edge of the boat and back on. And it, that's really cool. Nuno's actually only did that for the first time the crew's just gone. But that's really cool. And it's a lot quieter to do that when you're in port because people get off. So top tip. Then in the adults area, they have a pool. So they've got a main pool. So there's the bar, which is built in the water and they have like little seats. They have a main like plunge area. So it comes to kind of like my neck height and I'm like five, seven. And then you can come out of that and there's like a big round seating area where you can also sit. That's always packed full of adults all the time. Uh, because that's where the bar is as well so that's always really really busy and then also if you go up another level there's like a big globe ball and it's just got seats around it you can sit it's in the water it's got seats around it and then the water falls down around you that's really nice and it's not always that busy and you're at the front of the ship and that's just a really nice place to chill and you still get the bar service there so why wouldn't you want to go there but they're like the pool, that's, it's for a ship, there's still quite a lot of pools, I think, and nothing ever seems packed in a weird way, but I think it's because the ship doesn't have hundreds and hundreds of people on, like, I think it holds two and a half thousand, maybe, but you never feel like, whoa, this is too overwhelming, there's way too many people, like, it's really cool. The next thing I want to talk about is excursions. Now, as I mentioned, you can, Disney have all their own pre-planned excursions, which they have a list on when you book or you can look beforehand if you want and then when it comes to the time of booking excursions which is similar to kind of when you want to book dining and stuff on the Disney app you have like it's from how I think it's 90 days for your cruise you book your excursions you log on and you book whatever excursions you want now they have all pre-planned ones where they're organized before so before you get off the ship you have you get told there's a meeting area, you will all meet there for that excursion. You will then be told you are Jasmine Blue or Sleeping Beauty Yellow. And that will be like so that you know where you're going. They then escort you off the boat to where, however you're getting to your excursion. 
and then they'll always make sure that they bring you back. So the main thing about, the best thing about a Disney excursion is that they would never leave the boat. They will never leave without you because they know where you are, because you're on this organized thing with them as such. So they won't go anywhere without you, basically. So the prices are all listed on the website and they're, all, they're really good. The first cruise we went on, all our excursions were through Disney and it just felt really good. I'd never done a cruise before, so I felt safe that we were going to get back in time, but they are quite expensive. Now, you can organise your own excursions, but you just need to remember what time the ship leaves, because you don't want to miss the boat, obviously, or the ship, should I say. So this year, we ha or last year, sorry, we had an excursion booked in the Cayman Islands, and then when we got on the ship, the guy was like, look, I'm going to be honest, I don't think you're going to enjoy this excursion. I just, the beach that you're going to is really rocky, I just don't think you're going to like it. What I suggest you do is grab a taxi outside of the port when you get off the boat and then it will take you down to Seven Mile Beach and he said there's an adult beach club, you pay two dollars to get in and he said it's just really cool. He also said I can guarantee you lots of other people will be doing that as well so you don't kind of need to worry about getting lost. Anyway. Best decision we could have ever made. We had the best day. We got off the ship, there was like some taxi rank here and I kind of looked for people that had Disney lanyards that were on our ship so we could kind of follow them. And we, like a group of us were all going to the same beach. I think there was maybe 12 of us from the Disney ship that all got off at the same time and we're all going to the same beach. So we had this big mini bus and I think it was $5 each. So. It was fine and we just kept an eye on the time and then got the taxi back, which again, I think we shared with other people that were leaving. So you can do that. And also if you don't really want to do anything, you can just walk around the ports. So like Jamaica, we just got off and walked around the port, went to Margaritaville because every port has a Margaritaville and just chilled. So it's up to you really what you want to do and how much you want to spend and you can make this cruise as expensive or as cheap as you can really so it's up to you guys what you want to do so that leads me perfectly on spending money and what other things you're gonna spend money on that throughout the trip that you may not know about or you may not have like budgeted for as such so first off is gratuities i'm not 100 sure if you can pay that in advance of getting on the ship but when you get when you book it, they will tell you how much your gratuity will be throughout the trips, throughout your um, trip as such. So I think ours was 200 and something. I'm not 100%, but it's around 200 mark. And it will break it down. So it will tell you that your main server's getting this much, the assistant server's getting this much. This other person, that I really don't know what they do, but they just go around and go, hi, are you okay? That's, there's, there's, I think they're the head server, I'm not too sure, but they get something and uh, your stateroom host also gets something as well, so it's broken down to, so you know who's getting what. And then also the night before you get off the cruise, they leave you tiny envelopes in your room if you want to give extra tip on top of what you've given if you've had like amazing service. So that's an out of pocket expense that you will have 100% depending on how long you're cruising for will be how much you obviously have to pay and then obviously merchandise modeled by me here with the merchandise you're going to spend money <laughs> all the stuff all the merchandise on disney cruise ships are amazing like i bought this trip two spirit jerseys the one before i bought one spirit jersey Lewis always buys like zip up jumpers the just merchandise is so cute like it's really nice and I know they have cruise line stuff in the outlets, but you're never going to get the good stuff because the good stuff goes and it will never end up in the outlets. That's my top tip there. So if you see merchandise on board, don't think, oh, I'll wait and see if it ends up in the outlets because I can guarantee you it won't. You will never find this spirit jersey in the outlets. You won't find any spirit jerseys in the outlets. But... There's just so much nice stuff. Like I've got, I bought an Alex and Annie um, Disney Cruise Line bracelet. There's just so many nice things. And another thing with merchandise, if you see something on day one or two, get it 
because by the end of the by the end of the cruise, I can guarantee you they either won't have it or they'll have sold your size, and they only have as much as on board as they put on on day one. Like they don't get stuff as they go along as such. So Lewis saw a jumper on day one that he liked on our first cruise, and he was like, "Oh, we were here for a whole week. I don't need like today." Yeah, we learnt the hard way because by day two we went back to get it and it was gone. And we even like asked them to look where they store it all and they just completely sold out on day one of all his size. So if you do ever see merchandise and you're on the cruise and you really like it, make sure to get it in the first couple of days. They also have a Tiffany store on the Fantasy. They have a bag shop, they have a jewellery shop. They also have the area where you can buy your photographs because they have professional photographers walking around taking pictures of you. You can buy a photo package or you can buy them individually. And I don't think there's any other shops. You can end up spending quite a lot of money on merchandise. This pillow here, they used to have these in the state rooms, but people used to steal them. So they actually now, well, they didn't when we were on the last group, but you were, used to be able to purchase them. You can purchase the robes that you have in your room. There's like a lot of stuff you could purchase if you want to, but it's up to you. If you're like a big Disney merchandise fan, you'll most probably spend quite a lot of money. If not, then you might probably be okay, but you need to like factor that in obviously, because it's an expense, an out of pocket expense that you haven't thought of maybe. And another thing I've just remembered with the money as well is seminars. If you book a seminar, I know I may have touched on it when I've mentioned like the bars and stuff, but seminars are extra, so they're normally around $30 a head for a seminar, which could be cocktail making, champagne tasting, they do rum tasting, whiskey tasting, they're all $30 a head, roughly. Um, they are really fun. We've done the champagne and we've also done mixology. They're, you know, it just breaks your day up, it's something to do, you can kind of get, if it's hot, it gets you out of the sun for five minutes, it's just something different to do. Loads of people go, so you meet people. Like, it's kind of fun, and it's just something different, and it will just add to your whole Disney experience. Obviously, you don't feel like you have to do one if you don't want to, but if you're just too adult, sometimes that's kind of a fun thing to do to add into your trip. There's also tasting ones that you can also do if you're not into drinking. So I think there's kind of guacamole making, there's chocolate tasting, there's like other things you can do that aren't just obviously all alcohol based and don't again feel like you have to drink alcohol because there are loads of other things you can do. And finally, I'm gonna end on something that I don't wanna forget, which is pirate night and like the themed stuff. So both cruises that we have done have been Halloween on the high seas. If you do a cruise like that, there is a night where it is Halloween themed, so you will have they will decorate they decorate the whole ship based on Halloween, so your whole trip will be Halloween themed as such. So there's a big Halloween tree, all the plants are like dead looking, it's just so cool. And then they have a main night, which is a Halloween night, so during the day there's trick-or-treating, they do fancy dress, which everyone gets involved with, adults and kids, like it's really cool. And they have a Halloween like disco. So that's a really cool thing. And then I'm pretty sure all the cruises have a pirate night. And pirate night is insane. I don't actually think there's any other boat cruises that do fireworks at sea. So you need to basically go on a cruise that's got fireworks at sea because it's just mad. But they leave you bandanas on your bed, which you can wear if you want to. People dress up as pirates that go all out, or you can just wear the bandana, which is what we do. Um, the evening meal is pirate themed, the waiters dress up as pirates, they have a kids type show first which I think is at like 5.36 and it's like Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse and stuff like that and like music. Then they have the evening show which starts I think at 9.30 which is like Jack Sparrow and then they have the fireworks and then they have a DJ on like the deck for maybe an hour and just the pool's covered up so you can the whole deck is open to stand on. It's a really, really fun night. They do pirate themed cocktails. It's just so much fun. So 
that I'm leaving it on that because that is something really special about Disney cruises and the fireworks at sea. They're not don't expect to see something like witches, but still it's pretty cool that you can watch fireworks as you're going along on the sea. Like it's amazing. But hopefully I've answered some of your questions about Disney Cruise Line or some things you may not have known or anything. If you do have anything that I have, if you do have any questions or something that I've not mentioned that you want to know about, leave me a comment down below and I will happily reply to you there with anything you need to know. But in my opinion, Disney Cruise Lines are amazing. I highly recommend you go on one. Castaway Key, that's a whole nother thing I haven't even spoke about. But... If you need to know anything, please feel free to message me or ask me or watch all our Disney Cruise Line videos, which I will tag up there so you can have a look at them if you've not watched them. But thank you for like inspiring me for this video. But yeah, now onto a quick update before I go because I've spoken for like an hour. But I'm gonna have a like a week or two away from YouTube and stuff for now, and I'm gonna rebrand the channel because it's currently called Lou and Han. Lewis rarely's in them because he's obviously at work and I am obviously on them all the time so I'm going to make this channel just about me and Lewis will be on it sometimes but it's just better to have a channel named for me. I haven't thought of my name yet so if you do any only cool names leave me a comment down below and also the style of videos will be changing. Also I love these sit down videos where I just chat and a lot of my videos will now be sit down videos, challenge videos, I will have an occasional vlog in it but they'll be more structured, I'll have a set upload schedule, it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be good, I'm coming to a rut on uh, YouTube now, my growth levels have stopped, Like I just feel like I'm not really getting anywhere so I'm just going to totally mix it up and be all about me and show the real me you will still see Disney, so don't unsubscribe because I promise you there will still be Disney stuff. And it's just going to be more about Orlando and I'll do channel videos, hauls, things that I've bought at Bath & Body, things that I've bought at the supermarket. Like, it's just going to be totally different. Challenge videos, eating from a uh, gas station for 24 hours. Uh, they're the type of videos that I have in mind. I'm going to do drive with me videos where I can go through drive throughs in the US. So don't worry, you aren't losing out on the Orlando and Disney content. It will all still be there, but just in a new format. And there will be vlogs occasionally when I'm out and about, as in what the channel mainly is now. So I will do throw vlogs in there as well. But they're now going to be more structured challenges, sit down chatting videos. Stuff like that. I'm going to be a more girly channel and keep all the Disney stuff in and just make it really fun. Like that's, I feel like the fun has gone away from this channel and I've lost the fun of vlogging and YouTube and I don't know what's happened but I feel like that's gone away and that's not what I want. So there's going to be a whole new channel, there's going to be a new thumbnail for the channel, there's going to be a new banner, it's just going to be good and it's now going to be just a channel for me with Lewin sometimes when he's about, especially if I'm just doing like a vlog. But yeah, that's the update. So bear with me guys, I'm gonna have a break for like a week or two to sort out like the look of the channel, get some ideas of videos together so that I don't need long breaks in between. But if you have any cool suggestions for this new channel video wise, let me know down below. And I will still do sit down chatty videos like Disney Cruise or Whatever. We have booked a Royal Caribbean cruise, so I will have you will have that in like a vlog style as such, so do not fear. And yeah, that's the end of this video. Sorry it's been so long, but there's just so much to tell you about Disney Cruise Line. I could keep talking for ages, but obviously I don't want to bore you all. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, make sure to smash a huge thumbs up and subscribe down below ready for all this new content that I'm going to bring you. I'm going to smash it. I'm literally, I'm ready, I'm fired, I'm pumped. New videos are coming guys, stay tuned. So I'll see you all next time.